I'm never too busy to take a call from you guys. I'm so excited to share all the good news. I know, and I'm excited to talk to you because I read that this was your acting debut in a movie this huge. I mean, how does it feel to have something so big be your debut? It's surreal, honestly. I've always had such a lovely, deep-rooted respect for Disney. And the film that did it for me was The Little Mermaid. I wanted to be part of that world and to be a part of it is a dream come true. I really feel like Jamie Sparrow Roberts was like my fairy godmother, you know, to have found me through my YouTube site and to give me the opportunity to voice a character that so many around the world have gravitated towards and be part of history, Disney history, be part of the legacy that Disney has had for so many years. It's surreal. Yes. I like the part of your world pun that you use there, the Little Mermaid reference. Yes. That's good. That's good. <laughs> So was that the that was the one movie that you gravitated towards as I mean everybody has like their favorite oh, Disney movie. Little Mermaid was always your go to. Jodie Benson. I would I would just nitpick everything she would do. And I love watching the behind the scenes because there is footage on YouTube where they were coaching her through how they wanted her to interpret the character and seeing her. And I was just like, oh, that's amazing, you know? And when I was growing up, you didn't have YouTube, obviously. This is something new. But growing up, I would listen to the soundtrack, listen to when, you know, Sebastian was singing, you know, under the sea, under the sea, you know, and hearing all those vocals and just thinking, that's the magical place I want to be going to. And my parents would make the sacrifice to take us to Disney every year. And I would be there. And, and just for a princess to wave at you was like, oh, my gosh, did you see? It was Cinderella. And to be on this side of it and give that joy to kids and to see it in their eyes that, wow, I'm, I'm standing with a Disney character or she was in that thing and sing the song. I will never get sick of singing the song. I'm so happy <laughs> when they asked me to do it. I'm like, yes. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure you've been asked that already, but are you oh. sick of the song yet? <laughs> never, never. Imagine it's the song that made my dreams come true. And then it goes past me because for me, my grandmother wanted to be a singer and it didn't happen for her, you know, being an Afro Latina in Colombia and not coming from, and, you know, a prominent family, my mother, same thing. And she became a nurse, just like my grandmother. And so for me, I felt like I had to take that torch. And so I had a 20 year career in music, which was super fulfilling. Um, and it was wonderful. And I got to do things with, you know, Pitbull and, and Flo Rider and Snoop Dogg and uh, Sierra, Missy Elliott and Travel the World. But that little thing of like, oh, I always wanted to do something with Disney never happened until now and so for me when the casting director and and the you know the directors of this film Byron Howard Jared Bush and Sharice Castro Smith were with me I kind of like okay tell me your story I told them the story of my parents because to me that's the story that I needed people to hear their sacrifice I'm a I'm a first generation here you know but my parents moved here just like the Madrigales to this magical place that they knew no one and, and had nothing but had to start from scratch and it was so important for me to tell them their names and so they could understand their sacrifice and it's because of them that I get these opportunities and it's because my mother and my father dared to go to an unknown land and start a new life that I get to be in part of this world you know yeah. So cool. And I read all the people you worked with in the music industry because, you know, we were very curious. So <laughs> what did you, it said you toured, did you, were you a singer, dancer? What yes. did you do? I was signed with Universal Latino and they took a chance on me being Afro-Latin, the second to be signed to a major record deal after Celia Cruz. Uh, and then I wanted to do music in English and in Spanish. And I wanted to do reggaeton, which in that time was owned by, you know, the people that were from Puerto Rico. But I'm like, no, I'm Colombian and I still want to do reggaeton because I grew up in the Virgin Islands. I That rhythm is like in my blood. And so they actually supported me through it. And with them, I was able to do so many features with Tarkan as well. And they supported that, that idea of me doing that and I will be forever grateful so yes as an artist I traveled and and then I retired supposedly you know a few years back and now Disney was the one that was like okay I'm out of retirement I guess yeah. let's go <laughs> nice you're like Tom Brady you came out of retirement that's great 
Are you kidding? Yes, <laughs> I had to. I had to. And I'm having so much fun going to the Comic Cons and doing live events and doing shows now because I don't just do my own music. But to me, we don't talk about Bruno is a top 40 hit. Yeah. Plain yes. and simple. And yes. I play it in my shows because I love this song. I love hearing people sing to this song. Yeah. I love seeing their faces light up and going, we don't talk about Bruno. No, no. <laughs> Let me no. everybody together. Speaking of the song, TikTok has take, given the song a whole life of its own with remixes and everything. Do you have like a favorite version that you've seen? I've seen you dancing to the one with the Doja Cat remix. Do you have one That's, that you like? That is the one. I really love that one. I mean, I love the Doja Cat so much that when somebody did a choreography to it, I was like, oh, I'm jumping on this sucker. And I dressed up as Dolores and I like I did my own dance to it. it they, I love that Doja Cat one. It's so good. Yeah. Have you ever encountered someone who didn't know, since it's an animated movie, obviously, that you are Ad Adasa? Does anyone, when they found out, freaked out when you tell them that? Yeah, they're like, oh my gosh, you sound so much like that. And I was like, because that is me. And they're like, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I'm like, yeah, that's me. You look like her. I'm like, I did just so happen to be. <laughs> Adasa, thank you so much for taking the time with us today. We really appreciate it. Everybody loves We Don't Talk About Bruno. You're right. It's one of those timeless uh, songs. We don't talk about Bruno. Bruno. I don't sound no, as no, good as no. you. Hey, good to live in fear. Bruno stuttering and stumbling. I can always hear him soda muttering and mumbling. I associate him with the sound of falling sand. Shh, shh, shh. It's a happy lip that could get so humbling. Always like the land family fumbling. Grappling with prophecies they couldn't understand. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah. One more question for you. Yes. You you have the super hearing in the movie. Would I that do. be one thing that you would want? Super hearing in real life? Absolutely. I would okay. want to know what everybody is doing. Now, I wouldn't necessarily tell, but I'd be like, mm, I know you're lying because I heard it all. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you.